Welcome everyone, this is Justin with Bob's Watches. We have a new series today called Watch Chronicles where we always get cool watches in, they always have great stories, and we're trying to share some of those with you. So today we're here with Robin Farmer. Um, he has a really great watch that um, you know he's sharing with us. And uh, he was in the Navy, he's got really good stories. It's a, uh, a beautiful watch, so let's get right into it. Welcome, Robin. Well, hi, Justin. How are you? Thanks for joining us today. Um, so we're here to talk about the watch, right? Um, what uh, what watch do we have? It's a uh, 1970 uh, stainless steel Rolex Submariner, and I believe you call it the red. Yes. So it's a 1680 Rolex Submariner. I have it right here. You can kind of see it's a, a beautiful example, too. I love that. I mean, that red's so iconic, right? I mean, you notice that from across the room. Um, such a classic watch, such a classic uh, piece in Submariner history, and uh, it's fantastic that you had one. Um, can you tell us a little bit about it, how you got it, when you got it? I bought the watch in 1971, approximately. I was uh, stationed on a carrier. It was the Roosevelt, number 42, and I was on a med cruise. Uh, I was stationed out of Jacksonville, and I started diving when I was in Jacksonville, and did a lot of cave diving, a lot of deep diving, and I always depended on my friends who happened to have a Rolex uh, to time us and to see how long we were at depth so that we could decompress. Well, while we were on the ship in the Mediterranean, they also had a dive club and we did a great deal of diving from the ship. I says, okay, it's time to get a watch. And it just so happened that the Navy exchange on the ship had Rolex watches and the stainless steel watch was one of them. And the other one I believe was a stainless and gold GMT master. Okay. But that watch was three times more expensive than oh. the stainless steel one. And the cost of the watch, even at that time, through the Navy exchange was approximately two months pay. Do you remember, if you don't mind me asking, how much you paid for it when you got it uh, from the Navy exchange? I wanna say five to $600. I did purchase it on the ship and started diving with it. And for 20 years, I wore the watch and uh, it went everywhere with me. I basically never took it off because you had to wear it to wind it. it and then, so you wore, you wore the watch every day while you were in the Navy, while you were diving, it was kind of like an everyday wearer watch? Oh yes, absolutely, never took it off. Oh, first of all, because where would you leave it? You know, you're on That's, a ship with, with 4,000 people and you right. had no privacy. Yeah, there's no privacy, that was it. Right, so, so the safest place is probably on your wrist, yeah. That, that was it, it was on my wrist. You cleaned it with a little scrub brush and uh, you know some soap and that's how you, you kept it clean. Yeah. Yeah. So you actually bought the watch really for the tool aspect, more of it, right? Not so much that it was a Rolex and you wanted a luxury piece or whatever. You actually mm -hmm. wanted it to use how it was designed to use and, you know, wake up every day, know it's going to work, know it's going to be accurate. And, you know, kind of that was the more alluring part of the watch, right? That's it. It was, it was a functional watch for us because it was a life-saving device. When you're diving, it's no different than having a uh, a pressure gauge on your tank so that you know how much pressure and air you have left in your tanks when you're diving. Sure. You had to know how long you were underwater, what, and then of course at depth, you had to know how long you were down there. So as you came up, you could decompress. So yes, right. it was, it was a tool uh, that I needed to have uh, for doing what I was doing. I love that. Today, it's so much, I mean, with technology, there's computers and, you know, there's uh, things that have kind of surpassed the need for, you know, a uh, um, you know, this kind of dive watch, just there's with all the technology and everything. But it's nice to to see that this was actually used what it was used for, because now most, if not all the people buying these watches aren't buying them for their sole dive watch, right? I mean, there's just like I said, there's other options. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a great reminder that this, you know, these watches weren't produced just to be a luxury statement piece. They weren't produced to be a piece of jewelry. They were produced to do a job and they did it really well. And, um, you know, you're kind of living proof yeah. of that. Like, you know, it's uh, it was years and years that this thing, you know, performed, right? Oh, it did. Absolutely. Yes. And and yeah. I wasn't gentle on it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? that's good. The tools are meant to be used. That was it. And yeah. when you received the watch, I'm sure you could see there was a dent on the band. Uh, uh, I, I did see that. Yeah, it was. And uh, that took place when I separated myself uh, from the motorcycle and the watch decided it wanted to hang on and it grabbed onto one of the bolts and wouldn't let me go. <laughs> I rode in competition. I rode motorcycle trials in competition. And oh, wow. Okay. That, it's 
called moto trial now i guess right okay and when i was in competition and riding uh, one time i stepped off the bike uh, not voluntarily but uh, it sure. ejected and it, it grabbed on and and it it uh, just wouldn't let me go and it hung <laughs> Yeah, we went tumbling down the hill. Me on the bike. Oh wow, walk. that's kind of a, the double-edged sword because you don't want it coming off, you know, like in the in the parking lot or at the grocery store, and then you put it to the test and uh, it held you to it. Yeah, it kept me there. We didn't separate, yeah. but uh, yeah, yeah. So, were you a watch enthusiast before you got this watch, or you know, were you ever really into watches, or no, not at all. Uh, and I'm not even now. It was just okay. it was a. It was a tool. I had the Rolex and I knew it was the best one out there because the people that I dealt with were very good. And mm -hmm. if they and they recommended it and I said, well, if I can afford this someday, I will get one. And nice. I made the sacrifice to do it. One of the things that was a surprise when we got together and, and talked about purchasing the watch from me, what I didn't realize is 50 years ago, it wasn't just the watch that I was buying as a tool. But as of today, 50 years later, it was actually an investment. Right. Because the watch, right, the watch when I purchased it was $500. But today, selling it back to you over 20 times the cost uh, was returned. And as a retiree, we could certainly use the extra money. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a, a nice little bonus, right? Um, yeah, it's, it, it turned out to be a great investment. And especially recently, I mean, these vintage Rolexes, you know, have just caught so much hype and they're so collectible um, right. that, you know, the prices have just skyrocketed and they don't look yeah. like they're slowing down anytime soon. It seems like, you know, every year, every month they're more expensive. Um, so that was great. And it, it's, you know, a little reward for keeping it and, you know, keeping it in good shape and keeping all the things you actually have. I'll kind of share some of the... Um, some of the other things because you actually have so we have the original box i did yes same with it here <laughs> um we have the original paperwork the uh you know the rolex the rolex <laughs> catalog book from the time which is super cool um so yeah so we have all of this stuff um original papers including even and this is maybe my favorite the original hang tag and uh and anchor yeah. Yeah, and the spoon. And the spoon. So I was going to ask you about this one as well. So here. Yeah. I believe it's yeah. like that. Yeah. So really, really nice that you have all this stuff. Um, and I've seen the spoons around here and there. Um, I hadn't seen them with the watch. Did it come with the watch when you bought it from the exchange? Or was it like oh, yeah. a, like an extra throw-in thing? Was it part of the package? How did you come up with the spoon? It, it, it was all attached. Uh, okay. What you see is, uh, is what was... Uh, given to me when I purchased the watch. And because on the ship, you're living out of a sea bag. It's if you could carry it on, then that's what you get to keep. I had sure. that. I kept uh, and that, that. And you kept it with year. you the whole time? Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah that's, that's amazing that it was, you know, sailing around the ocean for so long and in your bag yeah. and in the service and all that. And it's, it looks fantastic. It looks like it's, you know, been, uh, been in your desk drawer for 50 years. It's in great shape. So um, yeah, a little credit to you for kind of keeping things nice, I guess. <laughs> well, um, let me let me show you guys the spoon because you don't see these that often. It's kind of weird. So it's, you know, it says Rolex up here at the top. Um, did you ever use it? I, the couple of these I've seen, I've always wondered if people are actually uh, you know scooping sugar into your tea with it, or it just stays in the box or goes on like a trinket shelf or or what? Yeah, no, it was it was as you see it. Uh, I think okay. it was. Yeah, it had a little bag with it, and it just stayed in the bag. And, and the watch, like I say, it, it was it was a tool, and we used it. And all the diving that we did, and, and the flying, and the, and the riding, it, it stayed on my arm that long. And wow, that... the reason I stopped wearing it, though, uh, 20 years later, I was in a position where I was working, and I would travel around to, uh, to places where I would have to take the watch off, because what I was doing was working with people in, in factories and manufacturing, where I would be uh, working on machinery and my hands would be going into places that if you got stuck, you couldn't get your hands out. So I stopped uh, wearing any, any watches or jewelry, including my wedding band, because of where I was, I was working and how I was working. What happened to it? You just kind of you know, hung out in your drawer or you wore it occasionally or? I would wear it occasionally, uh, maybe to a, a wedding or something where it was appropriate okay. to wear a, a watch or jewelry or something. Sure. And, but uh, because of, uh, the way it wound, I was never successful getting that to wind that. 
So each time I wanted to wear it, I would take it to a Rolex dealer and I'd say, can you wind this for me? And they said, sure. And they'd hand it back to me and they never charged me for it. It took them about two minutes and it was done. And off right. I went. It was running again until I took it off again. Yeah, until you uh, until you set it down. Um, and then how long did it sit? You wore it through work and it had its serviceability and then, you know, kind of wasn't as appropriate anymore. Um, but you hung on to it all this time. How long mm -hmm. how long did you hang on to it? Oh, I'll bet it was it's been probably dormant for 20 years. Wow. Uh, where I haven't used it at all. 20 or so years ago when you were actually wearing the watch, um, you know, it was it was still a Rolex. It was still a luxury watch, but it wasn't yeah. the market that we're in today where, you know, everyone notices they're super hot. Would people notice it? Was it a thing back then where someone would notice it on your wrist and, and be like, oh, wow, that's a great Submariner or what a cool watch or any of that? Or was it like not quite such a big deal back then? The people that uh, are in the know of watches and things, they would recognize it immediately. It's no different okay. than I would be at uh, lunch or something with a, a business associate and uh, they'd have a Rolex on their, their wrist. And, I, and you could tell by the band, you know, you'd say, oh, yeah. all right, that's it. You have a Rolex. I says, yeah. They said, oh, you had a GMT Master. He says, yes, my wife just purchased it for me for our 20th anniversary. And I said, oh, all right. And nice. somebody said, how do you know that that was a Rolex? I said, well, I, I've seen a few. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, you know, once you've seen them and, or you had one, you recognize them immediately. And yeah. watch enthusiasts are, it's kind of a, a special little club. I mean, everyone's into watches and there's that little bit of kinship to others who either mm -hmm. have the same pieces or something similar. So, I mean, I find myself doing it all the time out in public. You you know, you'll spot something from across the room. And like you said, a lot of times you can tell just by looking at the bracelet and you'd be like, oh, wow, that's a great old Submariner or whatever. So yeah, it's kind of cool. And it's nice to hear that it's, uh, you know, even before kind of all the, you know, the recent hype and collectability around these that, um, you know, it's been a thing for a long time. There's been, you know, watch guys and watch enthusiasts out there appreciating these things for, you know, a long, long time. Wow. And then we discussed possibly selling it. And I said, mm -hmm. well, let's get it out of mothballs and we'll wind it and get it going again, trying to wind it. I wasn't successful. And of course, I says, now, since it's 30 years later, mm -hmm. I says, they come out with this new thing called the internet and Google. So let's do a Google search. How to wind or start a Rolex Submariner and mm -hmm. up popped your site. And when I came oh. to your Bob's watches, it had a it had a picture of that particular watch, and I said, "Well, here you go." And they told Perfect. you how to do it, and it had all these different interesting facts about it. And I said, "Well, wait a minute." And I said to my wife, "I said, look, I says these things are relatively expensive now." I says, "And there's a place to get a quote." So I says, "Let's send a request for a quote." We did, and then Jesse called us back and got in touch with us and says, "Well, how long have you had this?" And I told him, 50 years." And you know, for authenticity, so I says, sure. okay. And he says, well, let us get back with you with a quote. And I said, okay. And very shortly later, a day or so, he was back uh, with an email. And then we talked about it. And I says, okay, it's a deal. Let's go. And nice. he sent us paperwork, shipping paperwork and insurance mm -hmm. on it. And we packaged it up and out it went. I love it. It's, it's great. I mean, that's exactly our goal here is, you know, yeah. we find we love getting watches like this in um, the condition, all the accessories and everything with it. I mean, it's just it's just such a nice package to get. And then also on the other side of that, um, you know, being able to, uh, you know, pay a significant amount of money um, to someone who's had it for a long time that actually turned out to be a great investment. You know, it's it's kind of a win win okay. for everyone. And, you know, it's just uh, it happens a lot, but we don't hear the details all the time. So when these stories come up, it's just so exciting to me to actually, um, you know, like hear the history behind it and how it all f unfolded and, um, you know, how it ended up into our hands, which is really cool. Is there any other watch? You said you're not really, you know, a, a hardcore collector or, or uh, enthusiast. Um, is there anything else that you would like to get with uh, like a portion of the money or, you know, just anything that's on your radar watch wise uh, outside of this piece? Uh, no, I, no. Okay. I have another watch that was given to me uh, and I can wear that if I need to. I believe that has a battery. <laughs> okay. But, yeah. You don't have to but, worry about the winding problem there. No, no, but it's a collectible, <laughs> you know, it's a collectible. I was given yeah, it uh, by a person that I worked for way back when. All right, Robin. Well, uh, thank you for joining us and thanks for sharing the stories and the information about this watch. Again, I'm 
you know, really grateful and excited that we're able to get it in and especially in the condition with all the pieces. So thank you very much for sharing and thank you for taking the time to sit with us and, uh, you know, and kind of give us a little bit of history on this piece. Okay, our pleasure. Thank you very much. All right, take care, Robin. All right, well, thanks for joining us, everyone else out there. Be sure to tune in next time. We'll have more Watch Chronicles. We get stories from you know all these great watches that we see all the time. So until next time, take care. Mm -hmm.